everybody, Dr. Fuck here, and check that out. That was a brand new intro, and I want to thank uh, John Shuffle. He's the one that made that, sent it to me, and I was like, fuck, I love that. And I know I just made an intro to my shows, and now I'm going to use that one instead. And the intros I used for my show on the last two episodes, I'll tack it on to the end. So it'll be like a bookend of uh, yeah. intro and an outro. I know the last uh, video I put up, I said I was going to talk about when... Ace was on Jimmy Kimmel, but it was never put up on Facebook. I mean, I'm sorry, on YouTube, but it was put up on uh, my news feeds. Uh, one of my friends on Facebook uh, put it up on Facebook, and I watched it, and he didn't do a full show. I saw he did, uh, what was it, uh, Shock Me, I think New York Groove, a couple things. It was whatever. I was expecting him to do a song, but so uh, I was going to give my review about it, but there's not much to say about it, but... There has been other stuff that has come out uh, pertaining Ace Fraley uh, on Blabbermouth I've seen. I like to talk about the couple stories I've seen. I think uh, I'm missing one, but I know one of them was saying he would uh, definitely rejoin Kiss if the price was right. So uh, don't expect him rejoining Kiss. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. I know a lot of people are hoping that he's going to open the end of the road tour which would be logical and stuff but I don't know I can't tell you if it's gonna happen or not but I can tell you if it doesn't happen a lot of people be disappointed but those people that be disappointed like me don't matter hardcore people don't matter we just don't matter you know how many people hate Metallica and Metallica still sells out stadiums and people hate Guns N' Roses and Axl Rose and they sell out stadiums Oh, man, it's not with Izzy or Steven Adler. I'm not going to that shit. Fuck that. And it still still uh, sells out stadiums. We don't matter. It's a cold, hard fact. It's just we don't matter. As far as uh, this tour, end of the road, well, you know, I mean, I don't think hardcore still matter, but it doesn't matter if the hardcores matter or not. And I know some uh, KISS fans are not going to like to hear this, but... Uh, unless they get a really strong opening act, like uh, a co-headline like they did with Aerosmith and Def Leppard and, was it Poison? Uh, it's not going to do well. And if it's going to be a three-year tour, uh, it, they're going to have to tour Europe if they think they're going to do this alone. Because Kiss in America, uh, going out there with, you know, I don't know, like, you know, let's say... Dead Daisies as the opening act. It's not going to sell out arenas. It's just not going to happen. They have to do something smart. Look, they might start the tour and it might start out strong a little bit, and but it won't. It won't really uh, make that much money. So promoters are not going to book them. Promoters ain't going to lose their ass on it unless they do something that'll fill arenas, and that is a co-headliner. Or maybe adding Ace and, uh, you know, and other members of the band, like Bruce Kulick and stuff like that. Uh, because that's how it works, man. It's all uh, promoters have to make money. If they don't make money on the tour, I can't see them touring the States for three years. They're going to have to go to Europe because in Europe they do great. In Europe they play stadiums and stuff. Just like on the Creatures tour. Remember the Creatures of the Night? They went to Brazil and they filled up stadiums and here... They couldn't fill up arenas. I saw it in West Palm Beach, and it wasn't a full arena. And it wasn't even technically an arena. West Palm Beach Auditorium was kind of like three-fourths of an arena, maybe even smaller than that. But that was a great show. That was the first time I ever saw Kiss with the plasmatics. It was amazing. And I know I talked about it before. I thought I was going to see Ace Fraley, but it turned out to be Vinnie Vincent, the first time I ever heard about Vinnie Vincent. And I got to tell you, Vinnie Vincent just fucking blew me away. And yeah, a lot of people uh, think that I'm this Vinny hater, which, you know, I don't like him personally as a person, but I loved him in Kiss. Creatures, lick it up. Guy's a fucking, that guy is fucking awesome in Kiss. As long as he's restrained a little bit, I'm a big fan of Vinny Vincent in Kiss. Something else I'd like to talk about uh, was Paul Stanley on that Rolling Stone podcast. Uh, him talking about, uh, you know, he talked about the set list and how, you know what? And he's right. I'm going to agree with him. He's right. Most people that go see Kiss just want to hear the hits. It's the reality, you know? 
I know you and I would like to hear Exciter. Well, if Paul can sing Exciter still, and that which another thing he 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 admits on the Rolling Stone podcast that that last video I put up, Americans Got Talent, it was actually pre-recorded. I said I didn't know. I wasn't sure. A lot of people were saying it was pre-recorded. It's so obvious and. Some of you out there going, no, it wasn't pre-recorded. Paul sounds great now. Well, Paul just said it was pre-recorded. Go listen to that interview if you don't believe me. And uh, I also love how that interviewer brought up the fact that Gene Simmons made fun of his voice. And Paul, Paul like, really played it off good. Like, it didn't matter to him. But, you know, like, at the same time, he says, uh, well, Gene can't sell tickets. So it's a little jab back and forth. It's... It's funny how, you know, this argument shit happens. It's entertaining. That's why this KISS channel is my most popular channel out of all my channels because KISS is constantly doing stuff that entertains us. Come on, whether we like it or not, it's funny. You know, Paul takes a jab at him. Um, <clears throat> so, okay, and then the other Ace thing he said, Ace Fraley came out and said, when I did the 1978 solo album, I realized I can make better music uh, on my own than with Kiss. Now, I agree with them as far as the 78 solo album goes. Um, and yeah, I know I've always said, you know, Rock and Roll Over and Kiss Alive are my favorite albums. But, you know, I mean, I'm not adding the solo albums because technically they're not Kiss albums. They're just one member of Kiss. And, you know, we all know a lot of Kiss albums doesn't really feature all members, but at least more than one or two, I mean, you know, I mean, two or three are on all these albums, where the Ace Fairly album, it's only Ace. So, I never would consider that an, a Kiss album. But, I will say this, in uh, retrospect, my opinion, not yours, uh, the Ace Fairly solo album is my favorite album that has the Kiss logo on it. So yeah, I, I prefer it over Kiss Alive and Rock and Roll Over. Doesn't take away how amazing those albums are. But I will also say the Ace Fairly albums after the 78 solo album, I don't think are as good as the 70s Kiss albums. I don't think it's as good as Creatures of the Night or Lick It Up. But all the other ones, yeah. Uh, other than Second Sighting and Anomaly, which I'm not a fan of, uh, I put those in par as some of those Kiss albums that I'm not really fond of. So there you go. That's all I got to say about Ace Frehley and stuff like that. So, uh, But I also want to talk about something I haven't brought up before. Is um, the movies that Gene Simmons has been in. Runaway is the first one. You know, not counting Kiss Me's Phantom of the Park. Uh, this movie I saw in the theater when it came out. And uh, it's... It's okay. I know a lot of people think it's his best one. I don't think so. I think this one is his best one. I actually really do like this movie. And I think he plays a terrorist really good. Is it a cheesy 80s movie? Yeah, it is. But I like cheese. I mean, when you're going to go to pizzeria, are you going to ask for a pizza without cheese? I do like uh, this, um, this movie. Uh, he's very convincing. I love the end with the grenade. Uh, it's it's a good, uh, you know, like a popcorn movie, you know, a good uh, rainy day at your house, you got nothing to do, slap that on. And, you know, I also have this. I found this for a buck at a, a flea market, the, the actual laser disc to run away. Um, yeah, I'm a nut swinger. And then there's this one right here. I, I recently saw somebody post about this and a lot of people were like, that movie's terrible. Gene Simmons is barely in this movie, uh, but, you know, he is in the movie. Uh, but, <clears throat> I really love this movie. Shit. I'm going to have to edit. Hold on. Like I was saying, I really do like this movie. And uh, I also own the soundtrack to this. And uh, to be quite honest, I know a lot of people love this. To me, it's okay. It's nothing to write home about. It's nothing. Because this is a soundtrack by Fastway. It's nothing compared to the first Fastway. This album fucking rules. Buries this one. I'm a fan of this Fastway. This one is 
I mean, it's not terrible, but it's so-so. I mean, I got the second fast way that's not nowhere near as good as the first one, but I'll take it over this one. So there you go. And then there's the last one I have, and I know Gene's been on Miami Vice and probably some other shows. Oh, I remember seeing a show. What was... Help me out, guys. On HBO, HBO had a show where Gene Simmons played like a Coke dealer. You remember that? That uh, You guys know that show? It was like a series that had... It's kind of like a Twilight Zone type. Each episode was a different story. And Gene played uh, this drug lord. And at the very end, like, the cocaine blew up and they all choked to death. What was the name of that one, man? I think I may have it on an old VHS somewhere. That was really good. That may be the coolest thing I saw Gene do uh, in movies. And yes, I know about Detroit Rock City. and But that's it. I don't know nothing else. So... Some of you want to uh, educate me. But then, last but not least, even though this one was probably done before the Fastway movie, I'm almost, I mean, the Trick or Treat movie, is this right here. And I know this is out on DVD, and maybe I will get it, and Blu ray, I believe. Never Too Young to Die, where Gene plays, is it here? Yeah, if you can look right here, uh, Transvestite. And uh, with John Stamos. And his name is Stargrove. I mean, this movie is so fucking bad. But in a way, I mean, it's not a movie I revisit, but I remember watching it going, dude, this shit is so terrible, it's kind of good. But it's not like terrible great as Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. That's fucking so bad, it's awesome. This one is so bad, it's bad. But uh, I think I've watched this movie maybe twice since the 80s. And yeah, I, I do laugh at some parts because it's so bad. But it is now on Blu-ray and DVD. You may want to check it out. I believe you can see this full movie on YouTube. I think so. I'm pretty sure I saw it on there. So there you go. That's all I got to say on this episode of The Almost Human. Um, about you know, It's all about Kiss, man. That's what most of you want. Most of you don't want me to put stuff that's not Kiss related. So I'm not. So, But... Uh, some of you do want me to play stuff that's not KISS related. So everybody that just wants to hear KISS stuff, you can stop watching now because now I'm going to go on to other stuff. Uh, my other channel, my original channel, my original review channel, uh, The Eternal Idols, uh, featuring my favorite band of all time, Black Sabbath, I just put up a poll saying, what is your favorite Black Sabbath album? Because I'm going to put it up in, um... <clears throat> On Thursday, I'm going to put up my list of my favorite Black Sabbath albums. And then I'm also going to put up the list of the viewers uh, list. And yeah, a lot of people, I think about 200 people already commented on their favorite Black Sabbath album. And if you want to be part of it, if you're a Black Sabbath fan, I put the link below. And uh, on that channel, you can see me review every Black Sabbath album, uh, every Dio album. I reviewed all Ozzy albums, but they were taken down because of copyright bullshit. So take part of it if you want. Anyway, so without further ado, here is the thing I'm going to tack on at the end of this. Um, my version of Just a Gigolo, you know, uh, it's an old, I think it was Louis Prima, Louis Prima song that David Lee Roth later covered in the 80s. Well, I, I'm doing kind of like the David Lee Roth version. And, uh, but I wrote the own lyrics to it, and I synced it up to the actual David Lee Roth video. So, I uh, hope you all enjoy, and if you have little kids, don't play this around them. It's pretty vile. So, uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Dr. Fuck, signing off. Later. <laughs>
to my place I hope you have no maze When I started dancing Cause the end comes I know I was just a gigolo Bitch get down on your knees Cause Cause I ain't so bad Gonna run my Dirty mitts Alone For your behind Come on grab my meat Come on take a seat Stop On your knees you drop Suck my cock Tugging my asshole and chugging my balls and sucking my cock